One afternoon, a young man gets a package from his best friend. As he holds it, he seems worried. He goes to his room and opens it with a cutter. Inside, he finds a packet of drugs. Curious, he picks it up and notices a blinking transmitter. Soon after, DA agents show up looking for him. Panicking, he hears them and quickly heads out the window. He jumps on the wall to escape, but the DA sees him. He tries to outrun them, but some agents use a car to cut him off. Inspired by true events, a young man named Jason has a video chat online with his friend. While talking, his friend offers him a part-time job that pays a handsome amount of money. However, Jason declines, thinking it's something shady. He tries to convince him, saying he will ship the boxes to his house. Jason gets tempted by the offer but continues to refuse when his mother, Sylvie, arrives home with groceries. Meanwhile, Jason's father, John, is the owner of a construction company. After making some deals, he gets in his car and is about to leave. He notices one of his employees still working, drives close to him, and decides to help. The man named Daniel introduces himself, telling John it's been three weeks since he started. Later that day, at Jason's house, a parcel gets delivered. Knowing what's inside, Jason anxiously receives and signs the parcel. He gets curious and opens the box. As he opens it, he sees illegal drugs, picks it up, and notices a blinking transmitter device. This serves as a signal for the DEA. Jason tries to escape, but the police catch him as they cut him off. Later on, John receives a call from his ex-wife, Sylvie, during his daughter's birthday party. With shock on his face, he immediately goes to meet Sylvie. Upon arriving, he meets Sylvie, who is anxiously waiting for him. He tries to get information inside, but the policewoman doesn't entertain him because it's not their turn yet. While waiting, John's lawyer arrives and informs them that Jason will be transferred to the courtroom later that night. He also informs them how serious Jason's case is. Eventually, they learn that Craig, a friend of Jason, is the one who has sent him the parcel. Before even sending the pills, DA has already arrested him, so the parcel is already set up. To shorten his sentence, Craig agreed to cooperate with the government. This is one way for the government to arrest high-profile drug traffickers. Later, they find out that Jason's minimum sentence is 10 years, proportional to the amount of drugs he is caught with. The following day, John and Sylvie come to the prison to check on Jason. They try to squeeze people he knows who sell the drug, thinking that he is indeed guilty. However, he is innocent, so Jason tells them that he does not know anyone except Craig. They tell him to point to anyone who he knows that has a chance of buying coke, but he refuses to set up others just to lower his sentence. John gets furious about his decision, but Jason is not changing his mind. Later that day, John calls one of his friends to set up a meeting with U.S. Attorney Joanne Kagan. He discusses the matter pertaining to his son. He tells her that his son is innocent and he just made a dumb mistake. Unfortunately, she does not shrink an inch and tells him that the only way for him to lighten up his sentence is by cooperating with the government to make arrests. John volunteers himself, but she turns down his request. Afterward, he goes straight to the prison to visit his son. He then comforts his broken son and assures him that he will do something. The two share a wholesome moment between a father and a son. Before leaving, he promises to his son that he will get him out of prison. Not wasting a single second, he searches about drug cartels right away. After planning, he takes actions by involving himself in the dangerous world of drug dealing. He goes straight to the hood and asks one of the dealers there for coke. When the man tells him he does not have any, John tells him that he will find someone else. The man suddenly changes his mind when John is about to hand out the money. He tries to snatch it, but John gets a hold of it as he tries to capture the man. However, the man is not alone. A group of gangsters attacks him and beats him up. Fortunately, a police officer roaming around arrives to his aid. Tomorrow morning, Joanna finds out about last night and gets angry with his reckless attempt. Joanna gives up and tells him what he should do. She instructs him to help with an arrest to someone who possesses at least half of coke. John comes up with an idea and searches his employees' records. He looks for someone who got convicted with a felony before. During his search, he stumbles upon Daniel's paper, who is convicted twice of selling narcotics. The one he is looking for. One day after work, he sees Daniel waiting for a bus in the middle of the rain. He seizes the opportunity and offers him a ride. John then invites him to eat at a restaurant so that they can talk about it. While in the middle of their conversation, he goes straight to the point and asks for his help. Daniel has abandoned drug dealing after being convicted two times, so he refuses John's request. 
He offers him five grand if he introduces him to someone and another five if something good comes out of it. However, he refuses no matter how many times John asks him. For his final offer, John offers him 40 grand, but he still rejects him. When he returns home, he sees his son with some gangsters, so he tells him to go home and threatens the gangsters to stay away from his family. When he comes back home, his wife is about to go out for work. He begs her not to go to work. However, they need the money, so she still goes out. The next day, when John goes outside his house, he sees Daniel waiting for him. They go straight to one of the influential drug lords he knows, Malik. He gets in conversation with him and eventually introduces John to him. The moment John sits on the chair, Malik suddenly points the gun at him. John puts his two hands up, showing that he has not come to harm him. Malik puts down his gun and tells him why he has come to his crib. He comes up with a business partnership with Malik, telling him that he wants to transport his goods. Since he is an owner of a successful business construction company, he knows the rules in transportation. Malik eventually gets convinced by his words and gives him two conditions. First is, his commissions will not be over 10% and for the first transport, John will be the one who will drive the truck. Afterward, Daniel demands his 20 grand, but John tells him that he will give him 10 grand first because he might go away with it. Daniel left with no choice, settles for it. The next day, he goes straight to Joanna and shows her the recordings of their conversation. During their conversation, he asks Joanna about her decision. She then promises John that she will cut Jason's sentence to a year if the man gets arrested. John and Daniel both tell their wives that they will be working for two days and will not be able to go home for the meantime. The two head out to their headquarters with the assistance of Agent Cooper, who has great experience with the undercover job. Later that night, the two move on together as they ride the truck while Cooper and the team record everything to be used as evidence. While on their way, John tries to ask about Daniel's personal life, but he does not want to talk about it. After a long drive, they arrive in El Paso and get blocked by El Topo's men. Daniel uses his expertise and tells them about their purpose. Hearing this, the armed men let them buy what they need. After they got what they needed, they start to load the truck with it. When they are about to leave, shots are fired. A rival cartel tries to ambush them while they are making a deal. The two immediately get in the driver's seat and recklessly drive away from the firefight. Afterwards, El Topo immediately calls Malik and tells him that he likes the idea of the truck. He also has taken interest in John, whom he describes as courageous. Malik gets happy with the news and tells El Topo that he will contact him when the two arrive. At night, the two arrive at the meeting place and call Malik. However, Malik tells them to change the location of their meetup and orders them to use the pickup instead of the truck. The two agree with him. John then hands out the keys to Daniel because he is about to take a leak. But in reality, he calls Cooper and informs the team about the change of location. Daniel starts to get suspicious because John is taking too long. Daniel goes to him and interrogates John while pointing a gun at him. Daniel gets furious, thinking that he is about to betray him. John then insists that he called his wife. Daniel refuses to believe and is about to shoot him. Fortunately for John, he manages to convince him. After he is satisfied with his answer, the two go toward the new meeting place. When they arrive, a sniper gets in a position to support John during the transaction. John then gets the coke and hands it over to Malik. Malik then slices the small parcel open with a knife and checks the content. He puts out the knife and orders John to take it. After John sniffs it in, Malik hands him over the agreed commission. During their transaction, the agents get in their position, prepared to attack. However, when Agent Cooper hears that John has won their trust, wanting to capture a much larger fish, he lets them go and aborts the mission. John, expecting their attack, gets confused because none of the agents respond. While he is looking for them, Daniel gets suspicious of him again, but John reasons his way out of his suspicions. When John returns home, his wife, Annalisa, gets angry with him because she smells something fishy. She confronts John and forces him to spill the beans. He tells her the truth, which makes her anxious for John's life. She tells John that he should consider their daughter as well and leaves. The next morning, John goes straight to Joanna and confronts her about the agreement. Cooper comes to him as well and tries to calm him down. However, John is furious with what Cooper has done. Eventually, he calms down and walks out. Joanna reprimands Cooper for being greedy, using John to take down a bigger fish. While he is in his office, Sylvie calls him to stop by the police station. Daniel still suspecting him, tails John. 
At the police station, Sylvie tells him that Jason gets assaulted inside the prison and has 36 stitches. Sylvie, like any mother, cries and blames herself. John comforts her and says that it's not her fault. Upon going outside, Daniel confronts him and asks what he is doing. He tells him that he is visiting his son and eventually confesses what he is trying to do. Daniel gets angry with him and tells him that they are not just against Malik but the cartel. He tells him that he is a dead man and leaves. Daniel returns home and gets confronted by his wife. They get into an argument but later on reconciles with each other. Meanwhile, when John arrives home, he sees cars of Malik outside. He rushes inside their house and sees Malik sitting. He swiftly tells his wife to go pick up their daughter and go to her. After she left, he goes with Malik to another business deal. Upon arriving at the cartel's base, John searches for weapons. He is confronted by El Topo, who attempts to convince him to join their organization, gaslighting him until they discuss his family's involvement, rendering John speechless. When John returns home, he calls his wife to ensure their safety. Despite advising his wife to cancel their visit to her sister, she refuses. Later that day, Agent Cooper reveals that El Topo, an ex-Mexican paramilitary, runs the cartel in their region. Now John, still concerned about his situation and family, wants to bring up their agreement to reduce his son's sentence by providing Malik. However, Joe N dismisses the agreement, intending to use John to track the cartels. Forced to comply, John visits his son for a heart-to-heart -heart talk before his transport mission. He also visits Daniel's apartment to reassure him that they won't let both sides control their lives anymore. The next day, John prepares for his plan, seemingly heading to the warehouse location. He ditches the Fed and executes his plan successfully. Inside the warehouse, John sees money lying around and a member warns him that every dollar is counted, holding him responsible. Meanwhile, Agent Cooper seeks answers to John's actions. Daniel successfully kills Malik, retrieves El Topo's number, and urgently sends it to John. Agent Cooper finally reaches John, who refuses to be part of their game and unveils his own plan. The cartels discover John is a snitch, attempting to apprehend him. Realizing his son is in danger, John informs Agent Cooper to aid his son and track El Topo's number. Agent Cooper subdues El Topo, allowing John to escape the cartels. The story concludes with John releasing his son from prison and Daniel reuniting with his family.